and welcome back to Solo Board Gaming Presents Wing Leader Victories. And we are in now to the final phase of our playthrough. We had the setup video with turn one. We then had our main playthrough video, which was the last video. And where are we? We've so far failed to make any impact on this Japanese raid coming in here. The two squadrons of Sally Bombers, the two squadrons of Oscar Fighters. In fact, two flights of P-40 Warhawks have been chased from the sky and are on their way back home. There were no losses. They broke because they're only small units of four aircraft. And after the melee they had with the veteran Oscar squadron here, they used ammunition, they broke. And each aircraft in those groups, basically finding themselves more or less alone, have headed home. They didn't suffer any losses. Instilled one loss on this Oscar squadron here. And this Oscar squadron, apart from that one loss, is also suffering from depleted ammunition. So that leaves us with just one full squadron of veteran Warhawks climbing towards the bomber street when they agonized over this very slow climb all the way through the scenario so far and as I think I mentioned before I wished I'd have started these much further back over to the west to give them more time to gain some height and actually now them being without oxygen their aircraft are not equipped with oxygen they are at their maximum altitude now which is this 11 height band here so straight into the next turn which i think is turn six i've lost count <laughs> and we'll start with the tally phase so the raider attempts to tally first so first this oscar squadron will attempt to tally these warhawks they are one two squares away he needs to roll therefore a three because you have to beat that range He's a veteran, so he's going to get a plus one. Here goes. He got a five. Whoa, bash. My thumb succeeded there where the Warhawks had failed and knocked them from the sky. So he got a five. That's tallied. They've tallied that last squadron of Warhawks. So that's Oscar squadron A. These Warhawks are now tallied. Where shall I put that? Let me put that there. How about this squadron? Will they have a go? One, two, three. They would need to roll a four. I don't think they get any pluses. No, they don't. So they need to roll a four, but no pluses. And they rolled a two. They've still failed to take any part so far in this aerial battle. Next one to attempt tally is the Flying Tiger Squadron here. So, okay, he needs to roll a one. He's only one away. Beat it by one. He needs to roll at least two. Whoa! He's rolled a four. Okay. Plus one because he's a vet. Yes. Plus two because this is now a large formation. Remember, if we have three or more aircraft adjacent to one another that's now a large formation and it's a plus two for a large formation that's now a seven minus one because it, that it's in the sun so we're down to a six easy tally at last for squadron a so turn it over to its tally side that squadron of bombers is now tallied and that's the end of the tally phase. And in fact, thinking about it now, he'll have got another plus one for his tally uh, from ground control. So he'd still be back to seven. But let's face it, at that range, you can't fail. Now, here goes. From our little group here anyway, the bombers move first. One, two. One, two. There's the tally. We know that that now triggers 
the Warhawks, because they tallied the Bombers. Now, let's be careful here. I can't go above 11 anyway. And moving, oh no, from 10, from altitude 10, it costs three movement points to move. I've got to use all of them. A free turn. And all three movement points to move into the square. Like so. And he still has his minus one climb marker on. Now, because our Warhawks are tallied, by this Oscar squadron here. This Oscar squadron now reacts. It's a chain reaction. He can't climb because also for the Oscar at this altitude, that would cost three movement points. So straight ahead, one, two, three movement points to join the battle. And finally now, Unalerted, one, two. Now it's the combat phase, and we have a multi-aircraft combat just here, and they're all connected this time by a tally. So this is where I place my battle identifier on the board to replace those units. All that's coming off the board. There it is. There's the battle taking place. And all the counters from within that square are coming with me. Brilliant, here we go. So we're on the battle display of Battle Able. And essentially what you're looking at is this rectangle here is a blown up and expanded version of the box on the main map. And here is our three-way combat. You see, that's much better. You could have four or five squadrons in this display, no problem at all. And we can clearly see who's carrying what kind of marker. First of all, we have the Sally Bombers, who are being hit from below. Dagger, 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 dagger by this squadron of Warhawks who have climbed from altitude 10 to altitude 11. And there's their minus one speed, the inertia marker, if you like, for that climb. The Sallies, of course, are tallied by this squadron A here. And meanwhile, at the same time, and as part of a chain reaction, the Japanese Oscars here, who are also squadron A, have tallied, of course, the P-40s, which brought them into this fight in the first place. And as the P-40s are zoom climbing through the Sally Bombers, the Oscars are also entering the fight from this direction. So the first thing we need to do is, on the side of the Flying Tigers, we know which squadron is involved, this one. For the Japanese, they have to decide which squadron, this one or this one, is going to be their primary defender. Because despite the fact that the Oscars are coming in here to all intents and purposes to attack the Warhawks, it's the Japanese that are the defenders in this combat. And that's because there's a rule which says if the combat for any side involves a bomber squadron, that side is always the defender. So, as I was saying, the Japanese then have to decide which of their squadrons is going to be the primary defender. They can't both be. One has to be primary, and in which case its stats are used. And the other one is merely secondary. For instance, if we choose the Sally Bomber squadron as our primary defender, we roll against its stats. 
the fact that there is an Oscar squadron involved would give a plus one to the die roll. On the other hand, if we chose the Oscars as the primary defender, we use its stats. And because that's a bomber, there isn't a plus one to the die roll. But the bomber's defense value, which here, by the way, is only zero, would come into it anyway, regardless. Now, if we chose the bombers, I think its values are so low that plus one from the Oscars won't make up for that. Because don't forget, speed and turn ratings for the Sally will be minus one because it's carrying a full bomb load. Yes, indeed. And at this altitude, the speed, because we're at altitude 11, so we're in this middle band here, the speed would go down from three to two, and the turn would go down from three to two. Very low indeed. For the Oscar, we're at band 11, where the speed is three and the turn is an impressive five. So decision made. The Japanese defender will use the Oscars as the primary. So let's take a look. Attackers first. We're definitely going to use speed attack, despite the fact that we'll have to minus one for the climb. So the Warhawks go from four to a three because of the climb. And the squadron is veteran. So it goes up to four, like so. And for the Oscars, the primary defender, the speed rating is three. It's not climbing or diving. It too is veteran, so it goes up to four. So that's it. Four from four, either way, is zero. They're both rolling on the zero column. So there we are. That's a reminder that both sides are going to be rolling on this zero column. So let's have... <laughs> I'm scared. Let's have the Warhawks roll first. Here we go. Five. Ten. Good roll. But where is it going to go? So we rolled a ten. Minus for head on. No. The defender is not evading. It couldn't have done anyway. I'm sorry I didn't explain that. No pluses there. No pluses there. No pluses there. Ah, okay. So it's a 10. On the zero, no. Two hits. Let's just put that die like that to remind myself. Two hits. Excellent. Right, let's roll for the defense. Seven. Uh, it's not head on, it's not that, uh, there's no bounce. Japanese don't have an expert, no gyro, no there. Uh, plus defense rating. The defense rating, that's where we look over at the bombers, that's where they can contribute, but it's zero for the sallies. Now, this is where it's so important too. Realize if I'd have chosen a turning combat, okay, rather than a speed straight through combat, that's where that defense rating would have been increased by two if in a turning fight. And that's because the bomber's machine gunners would have time, more time anyway, to bring their guns to bear. Anyhow, with my rudimentary maths, it's seven. And there's no minuses and no pluses. So it's a straight seven. One hit. 
Now we have to see how many losses. Okay, let's try the Warhawk first, because the Flying Tiger Squadron hit two aircraft. When there's multiple aircraft involved, as there is here, you can't apportion a second loss to a squadron until the other combatant has also received a loss, if you see what I mean. So, two hits. We're rolling one die. So first of all, the hit on the bomber squadron. Six. Superb, six. Uh, we don't get any pluses apart from our firepower, which we know for the Warhawk B, the firepower is one. So we've scored a seven. And if I just bring this over here, we now have to compare that to the bomber's protection. The bomber's protection is four to five. If it was lower, if we'd have rolled lower than a four, no result. Higher than a five, it's a hit, a four or five, and it's a straggler. So that's how that works. We've rolled a seven, higher than the protection, it's a loss. So the bombers will now take a loss marker and it was squadron X. Now, so that's one loss. Now, the hit on the Oscars, five. Plus my firepower, which is a six. There's no other pluses or minuses. The protection on the Oscar is three. Six is much higher. That's a loss. That's the second loss for the higher Buster squadron. Now let's roll for the one hit on our Flying Tiger squadron. A four plus the firepower of the Oscar, which is zero, so it remains a four. Our protection is three to four. Can you see that there? So a four is equal to that, which means it's not a loss, it's a straggler. Now we haven't seen that before. It does make that straggler vulnerable. Let's hope he's gonna make it home. So that straggler, goes on the display for Squadron A of the Flying Tigers. And now finally, let's roll for cohesion. And all three squadrons have to roll for cohesion. First of all, the bombers. Two dice. That's four. And two is six. This is for the bombers, remember. Total loss markers is one. So that six is now at five. They're not veteran or green. They weren't on the attacking side. That's it. They've rolled a five. We come across to the bomber column. No result. That's still cohesive. It's difficult to break up a formation of bombers. Let's go on to the Oscar squadron. Oops. Six. Total of their loss markers. They now have two loss markers. So it's minus two. So that's now down to four. They are veteran, so they get a plus one. It's now five. They have no radio. Back down to four. They have minus two for a depleted ammo marker, which they do have. You see now how, because that squadron knows it's got virtually no ammo left, it plays a big part in their decision to stay and fight. So they're now down to two. Two levels, look, three or less, 
on the fighter column, two levels of disruption, and altogether, we all know what that means. Squadron is a two-step unit. Disrupted is one level. Broken is two. Finally, that Oscar squadron is broken. I just need to put a low ammo marker onto the Warhawk squadron. And our combat is done. Now, theoretically, one or the other side of these fighter squadrons could try and hold the other into a dogfight. The bombers would still fly ever onwards and these guys would be in a dogfight. We can't do that because one squadron is broken. They can't be held to a dogfight. So that's our situation at the end of this turn where that multi-aircraft combat took place, which was there, taking the marker off, placed the squadrons back on. The Sally Bombers are still tallied by the P-40s. The Oscar squadron, however, is broken and heading home. That's why we couldn't hold them into a dogfight. Not sure we'd have wanted to anyway because of their turning ability, because all dogfights are turning combats. Yes, very different. So because he's broken, he's now lost his tally on the P-40s. Both sides agree to allow this marker, this token of Oscars to be taken off the board because they'll play no further part in combat. They're heading home and the P-40s need to concentrate on the bombers. So we tidy that up by placing him over there. There he was, look, with his broken marker, his two losses, his depleted ammo. And finally, we have a loss within bomber formation X, shown there. This is the Warhawk Squadron, A, veteran, but they have a straggler and now a low ammo marker. On to the next turn, turn seven. This Oscar unit is going to try once again to tally. The Warhawks, one, two, they need to roll a three. There are no pluses or minuses. Wonder if I can just get that in there. Like so. Yeah, we'll have a look. We'll try that one. Here we go. And they did it. You see that? They rolled a three. <laughs> so they've tallied finally. So we'll put a B tally on the P-40 squadron. The P-40s want to retain their tally on the bombers and now it's movement. So bombers move, one, two. Notice, look, they're still tallied. The P-40s are gonna move, one, two. No climb marker anymore. There's their tally marker from the Oscar squadron. The Oscar squadron are going to move. They're now alerted. So they've increased throttle. They've now got three movement points. They can go one, two, Dive, three, they get an extra movement point, four, because of the dive. They can get to this combat. Wow, what a move. And one, two. That's where we are right now. So once again, the Japanese have to pick a primary combatant. And just like last time, it's gonna be the Oscar, particularly now that he has the plus one for diving. So the primary combatants then are the two fighter squadrons. The defender, because of the bomber squadron, is still the Japanese. The Warhawks are gonna use their speed rating, which is four. 
They're not climbing this time, so they're not going to lose anything there. They're veteran, so that goes up to a five. And there are no more modifiers. They're not disrupted or anything like that. Onto the Oscars. And if you remember at this altitude, their speed rating is three. But they do get a plus one for diving. So it's up to a four. So five plays four. There are no more modifiers. Minusing one from the other. The Warhawks are on the plus one column. The Oscars are on the minus one column. Let's roll for the Flying Tigers. We get a seven and there are no modifiers whatsoever. So on the seven row, plus one column, one hit. One hit. Let's roll for the defenders, the Oscars. Oh, we've got an eight and there's no pluses or minuses. It's not head on. There's no bounce. We add the defense rating of the Sally Bomber, but we know that's only zero anyway. So that's eight on the minus one column. It's one hit. Ha <laughs> ha. Okay, so there's a hit each. Now let's take a look at those hits. The Flying Tigers are gonna place their hit on the bombers and we roll one die and we add our firepower. Firepower is one and we add one die. Five plus the one firepower is six. There are no other pluses or minuses. The maximum protection of the Sally Bomber is five. Just remind you here, there it is. It's a five and we've beaten that. So it's another loss for the Sally Bomber Squadron. They've now got two losses, look. Actually, shall I place that a little bit better side by side? You can see it there, okay. But remember the Oscars also managed to hit one of the Warhawks. Is it a loss? Their firepower is zero. Plus this dice roll, which is a two. They only scored a two. And looking at the protection of the Warhawk, that's no hit. So the Warhawks have come out better so far. That just leaves us the cohesion role. This bit is now vital. Let's look at the cohesion of the Sally Bombers. Now remember this time, they've got two hits to take into account. Let's roll for the Sally Bombers cohesion. They get a six, that's two threes look. Minus the total of their loss markers, which is two. So that brings it down to four. There's no other pluses or minuses. Four on the bomber squadron on the bomber column is one. One level of disruption. Finally, that's what we were after. At least one bomber squadron now, at least, is disrupted. There it goes. Let's try the Oscars. They rolled a seven for cohesion. They're not veteran or green. They've got no losses, but it's a squadron without a radio. So it's minus one, so that's six. They have one level of disruption. So we'll put a disruptive marker on them. And now finally, for the Warhawks. They got a six, plus their loss markers, they have none. The squadron is veteran, so it's plus one, so that's seven. They are the attacking side, plus one, so that's eight. They do have a low ammo marker, so that's back down to seven. Seven or more, none, no disruption. 
Now, of course, what the Japanese squadron wants to do now is hold those Warhawks to a dogfight to allow the bombers to escape. Will he do it? To do so, we take one die. Because I, as the Flying Tigers, do not want to get into this dogfight. I want to keep pursuing those bombers. So can those Oscars hold me into a dogfight? So we take one die for, first of all, the Japanese player. He rolls a four. He adds his basic speed, which is at this altitude is three. So he's got a seven. Is he veteran or green? No, that's it. He's rolled a seven. Now, the Warhawks roll. Oh, that's not good. <laughs> We've rolled a three. We add our basic speed, which is a four. And that's a seven in total. Plus one, we're a veteran, eight. So he's not beaten our score. In other words, our speed means that we've avoided that dogfight. Thank goodness for that. And after the movement phase of the next turn, that's where they are. They've all proceeded by two squares. They're near the edge of the map. One bomber squadron is disrupted. The other is not. And unfortunately, although that squadron has fought bravely, the Warhawks, the Flying Tigers, cannot win this scenario. I started off really, really badly. <laughs> I squandered those first two flights. One of the main causes of that, and I keep repeating it, is that I didn't start far enough back. I didn't give myself enough time to reach any altitude. But that's the difficult part about that particular scenario, actually. And that's most of the point that that scenario is trying to get across and the fact that the P-40Bs couldn't climb above 11,000 anyway. So that was the point. It was almost certain that the Flying Tigers were gonna be at a disadvantage if those Oscars could dive on them. So I should have started them further back. And as far as those two flights are concerned, especially that green flight straight out of flight school, I should have avoided contact with those Oscars at all costs. Once my veteran squadron got in there, it really evened things up. And by the time it took on that first veteran Oscar squadron, which had caused all the damage and broken up my two Warhawk flights. But by the time that Oscar squadron met that squadron of Warhawks, they had depleted ammo. They'd suffered a loss in combat. So very quickly then, they were then disrupted and sent packing for home. So I think we'll end it there. We've covered most of those basic rules. Now what I really want to do is a much more complex scenario. Not right now, but in the very near future, where we have bombing rules, so we're attacking ground targets and trying to defend that kind of situation with multiple aircraft multiple types of aircraft and how a fighter wing works together. That's for the future. But meanwhile, I hope you've enjoyed this basic scenario. Thanks ever so much for following it. I've really enjoyed actually doing it. This is one of my favorite games. So I hope you'll join me again next time for something very, very different and in the future for more Wing Leader. Thanks a lot. See you again soon. Bye bye.